Good evening and welcome to the opening night of the 20th annual Wisconsin Film Festival. <laughs> My name is John Baldacchino and I'm the director of the University of Wisconsin Madison Arts Institute. <laughs> Someone has to do it. <laughs> As you may know, the Wisconsin Film Festival is presented by the Arts Institute in association with the Department of Communication Arts. This year, we are pleased to return festival screenings to the spectacular campus venue, Shannon Hall. We are incredibly grateful for the support of the Wisconsin Union Theater and their campus arts ticketing operation. It is wonderful to see so many people here tonight and to know that 20 years running, the festival is as strong and vibrant as ever. In recognition of the festival's great beginnings in 1999, I'd like to introduce you to the first director of the Arts Institute, my predecessor. Not just my mate, but the man. <laughs> The man who oversaw the inaugural edi edition of the Wisconsin Film Festival, Professor Emeritus Tino Balio. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, I want to reiterate how wonderful it is to be back in the Wisconsin Union Theater. This is a perfect venue for the film festival. It was one of our first uh, venues when we started uh, some 20 years ago. And I should point out 20 years ago, it was a beautiful spring weekend. I think it maybe has been in the 70s. You couldn't have asked for better weather. <laughs> Anyway, Wisconsin being what it is, we're here tonight. And thank you for all for coming to launch the film festival, its 20th edition. Now, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background, very, very briefly, to, to be fair. Uh, the idea for the Wisconsin Film Festival originated with the Wisconsin Film Office in 1997. Uh, the Wisconsin Film Office was part of the, uh, uh, the state of Wisconsin uh, tourism department. Um, the Wisconsin uh, Film Office uh, sponsored uh, tailgating parties in Los Angeles for a couple of years in the hope of encouraging filmmakers, those with Wisconsin ties, to produce their films and television programs in the state of Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Film Office hoped that a Wisconsin Film Festival would promote this goal. Now, the Wisconsin Film Office billed the original uh, film festival as the, the Great Wisconsin Film Festival. It promised uh, a guest attendance by Robert Redford, who was accepting uh, a, a, an award called the Great Cheesehead, or the Golden Cheesehead Award. <laughs> and uh, the film festival promised to premiere major Hollywood movies. But when the Wisconsin Film Office realized it could not deliver on, the, on its promises, it threw in the towel. That's when the Arts Institute took over. I had been working with Stanley Solheim at the Wisconsin Film Office to launch the film festival, but the Arts Institute had a modest budget for arts outreach, which enabled me to take over the planning and enlist two students to program and run the launch. They were James Krell, a PhD student in the Department of Communication Arts, and he is here. Jim, stand up. And he was, he was assisted by Wendy Weger, a senior com arts major and member of the Wisconsin Union Directorate. The first film festival screened some 30 films, and they were all free. Things change, of course. <laughs> they were screened all on campus at 4070 Vilas, uh, the Wisconsin Union Theater, the Play Circle. 3,000 people attended on that beautiful spring weekend. And the attendance confirmed what we had expected all along, that Madison was ripe for a film festival. It didn't take a brain, uh, uh, what should I say? It didn't take a brain scientist to figure that out. <laughs> After the first year, 
The Arts Institute decided to establish the Wisconsin Film Festival as an annual event and cobbled together the funds to hire Mary Carbine as the festival's first professional director. Carbine received... Carbine received her BA and MA in film from the UW and had extensive film festival experience. The best thing about Mary was that she did the job of three people. Uh, she did the work of three people as a film programmer, a fundraiser, and events manager. We got our money's worth from Mary. During her first year, Carbine more than tripled, tripled the number of films screened and expanded the film festival to downtown venues. The festival was a huge success. Audience increased the first year from 3,000 to, to 12,000 during the second year. From the start, the Wisconsin Film Festival has eschewed Hollywood glamour and programmed foreign films, independent films, documentaries, and archival films. And during Carbine's first year, the festival instituted the Wisconsin's, Wisconsin's own series, which showcased films and filmmakers with ties to the state of Wisconsin. Ticket sales increased each year, and the Wisconsin Film Festival became a premier campus-sponsored film festival in the United States. Of course, the, the success of the film festival did not rest on one person. From the very start, the technical staff of the Department of Communication Arts, led by Eric Gunnison, were always at the standby. They were always ready at the standby to keep the projectors running. Student volunteers and community people uh, assisted in the operations, and corporate sponsors, especially Isthmus, lent in-kind and financial support. Carbine served as film festival director until 2005. Meg Hamill continued the good work as film festival director. Meg Hamill continued the good work as Film Festival Director until 2012. Today, the Wisconsin Film Festival is jointly run by the Arts Institute and the Department of Communication Arts. It's a fine symbiotic relationship which should keep the festival running for at least another 20 years. Let me now introduce Ben Reiser, Arts Institute Arts Reach, Outreach and Community Engagement Director. Thank you.